my first impression of sound techniques. I have a vague recollection of the studio. I've, I think there was a stairs that went up to the control room on, on sort of on the left hand side. And there was a, a place where you'd set drums, but we didn't have drums, so it didn't really matter. We sat around in a circle and recorded and various techies came down and, and placed mics everywhere, which we were kind of afraid of. <laughs> the sound of the room, I, I, think, I think there was, and I think you could, by moving around the room, you could change the, the, the sound ambience. And I know that horns used to get recorded in underneath in the lower part. I think we were more out in the main room, as, as far as I remember. But sound techniques, the, there definitely is a sound, but I, I'm not sure how much that is the room and how much it was the way that things were recorded by, by the very clever engineers. We'd never used uh, headphones and they were referred to as cans and we didn't know what they were. Yeah. Put the cans on. What? Yeah. <laughs> Joe's very laconic voice would come down through the fallback. Ivan, that third string still sounds a little sharp. <laughs> Joe was really good at that, you know, he said, well, Ivan, I think, you know, you might, oh no, that's the wrong, I, I can't turn a back now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you could maybe just tune the B string up a bit or something, you know, he was good at that. <laughs> Ivan, your G string is slipping, that's about it. <laughs> Joe gave us a free reign, really. Um, he just wanted us to, to record as, as if we were playing a performance, a live performance. It's, ah, it's wonderful. And I think Joe wanted to market us as string band lives. You know? I mean, we, we were in the same territory and so far as we were acoustic and our own material, um, we weren't so steeped in folk music as they were, really. We were steeped in folk history and so on, but not musically like that. We hadn't done so much in folk clubs and so on, you know, the, as the Incredibles. Like the string band had been a, a fairly, not necessarily their music, but the fact that, that you could write songs about your own experiences and they didn't have to be about American experiences or about lovelorn days. That kind of opened our, our eyes and ears. Horse of a different hue, we wanted to give it that sort of feel. So we started off quite Santana-esque, but we couldn't maintain it for very long. But while it lasted, it was very exciting. And uh, Hoppy did some great drum work on it. But I, I remember playing the Hammond organ. There was, a, there was a, a genuine Hammond organ there, which was great fun to play. We were so excited when Kip of the Shreens came out, the actual product, you know. I think the albums were received with a deafening silence, as far as I can remember. <laughs> yeah. We were great admirers of Fairports and, and Nick Drake, and we knew, knew their work and, and knew that they recorded in sound techniques, and we felt pretty honoured, actually, to be going in the doors. <laughs> 